Nike's story begins with its famous slogan, Just Do It. But Nike isn't just about performance. Nike is a big player in the fashion world, which has revolutionized it several times. Nike's story isn't just about the swoosh, it's also about the many different ways this company was able to break into new markets. Nike has over 39,000 retail stores in over 120 countries, and you can find them on six of the world's seven continents. What is your biggest goal? For Nike they wanted to be the best on the market and today, they are a benchmark in quality. Join me in this video and see how one of the most influential sports brands in the world was created. Nike is a clothing and footwear company founded in the early 1970s in the United States. Since the beginning, the company's history has been mixed with the history of tennis, since it was essential to influence and designate references and trends in the market. Nike's history begins with Phil Knight and Bill Bowerman in 1971, in Oregon, United States. The business duo had the intention of bringing inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world and began their activities modifying sneakers imported from Japan. But in some parts of the world the company only arrived in 1988. Interestingly, Nike is estimated to be the most valuable clothing brand in the world, according to the Brand Z ranking. The company is valued at $37,472 billion. Some public figures like Cristiano Ronaldo, Kevin De Bruyne, LeBron James and others have been sponsored by the company for years, making it even more influential. But it all started with Blue Ribbon Sports in 1964. At the time, Phil Knight had just graduated from the University of Oregon, where he was part of the track team. Because of this, Phil was close to Bill Bowerman, who was coach of the sport. In addition to an intensely competitive feeling, Bowerman showed a fascination with optimizing his runner's shoes, constantly fiddling with different models after learning from a local shoemaker. According to Nike, Knight was the first student to try on one of Bowerman's shoes. Seeing him as an unimportant runner to test out his shoes, Bowerman offered to take one of the shoes and fix them to his custom design. Knight accepted the offer, and reportedly the shoes worked so well that his teammate Otis Davis took them and ended up using them to win gold in the 400-meter sprint at the 1960 Olympics. Otis Davis insists to this day that Bowerman made the shoes for him. Bad new people but that day the world's first Nike was presented. After graduating from Oregon, Knight went to Stanford for an MBA, but he didn't let go of his old flame. That's because he was still studying the production of running shoes, suggesting that Japan should be the new big hub for the market, rather than Germany. In this way, Knight decided to travel to Japan, where he managed to sign an agreement to import Tiger brand shoes. The partnership was enough to bring Bowerman into the venture, as the coach was not satisfied with the German models either. From the partnership, Blue Ribbon Sports emerged on January 25, 1964. Although he developed alternative and cheaper shoes, Knight had great initial success with Blue Ribbon Sports. The public had a good reception for the quality of imported sneakers, which were on the same level as Adidas and Puma, dominant in the market. With only a year in the company, Bowerman decided to innovate and proposed a new model of footwear that would change the history of Nike. The idea was to offer better support for runners from a cushioned insole, as well as include sponge rubbers in the forefoot and upper heel, soft sponge, and in the middle of the heel, hard sponge. In addition, the new model would feature a firmer rubber sole. The new sneaker model took two years to be launched on the market and, in 1967, it hit stores as an immediate success. The success, however, troubled Tiger's Japanese. Knight argued that Tiger wanted to end its exclusive contract with Blue Ribbon, while the Japanese company accused Blue Ribbon of selling its own version of its sneakers under the Nike name. Tensions between the two companies prompted a formal separation in 1971. The separation came shortly after a lawsuit by Tiger, but allowed the two companies to sell their own versions of the new sneaker model. In this way, the same footwear could be found under the Nike Cortez and Tiger Corsair brands, which would become ASICs. The split also brought about a revamp at Blue Ribbon, which officially changed its name to Nike. At first, Knight thought about the name Dimension 6, but the inspiration in the Greek goddess of victory ended up being definitive for the choice of the new name. At the same time, the new company also needed a new brand sign. That's how Nike got to Carolyn Davis, a design student at Portland State University.
The job cost just $2 an hour, resulting in a total of $35 for the brand that has become one of the most popular in the world. However, a few years later, Phil Knight awarded 500 Nike shares to Carolyn Davis. The value is currently estimated at around $1 million. Nike's history has continued to replicate the success established by Blue Ribbon Sports. Shortly after the highlight of the Tiger Cortez model, Bowerman returned to revolutionize tennis history with the waffle design concept. Over breakfast, the coach observed the ridges of the waffle he was eating and got the inspiration for a new sole. Bowerman thought about how those marks would be inverted and decided to pour molten urethane into a waffle iron. The first attempt failed, but the coach did not give up and managed to optimize the sole. The new sneaker model was the first big hit in Nike's history, following the company's revamp. From there, growth never stopped, securing Phil Knight millionaire status in 1980. In addition to the revolutions in tennis models, Nike's history also has important support from athletes and celebrities such as Tiger Woods, LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. But the most prominent name in the company's history was certainly Michael Jordan. Even before having his first season as a professional player, in 1984, the athlete was sought after by the company. Jordan however, had never worn a shoe from the brand and was seeking a contract with Adidas. The turnaround came after Nike offered a five-year, $500,000 a year contract, two Mercedes cars and custom shoe models according to the athlete's requirements. Interestingly, the profits don't stop for Jordan, who makes about $100 million a year in royalties from the partnership. Ultimately, the deal proved extremely profitable. Jordan established himself as one of the greatest players of all time and even developed his own footwear line, Air Jordan. By the end of 1985 alone, the line had earned over $100 million. Even today, Air Jordans are among the top models produced by Nike, leading to a turnover of $2.8 billion in 2018 alone. In the world of football, Nike only had considerable growth when it decided to enter the field and sponsor the Brazilian football team in 2002. Coincidentally or not, Brazil won the World Cup that year making the brand more recognized worldwide. Within the history of Nike, there is a lot of controversy about its labor practices, but it's not my place to give you the wrong news. According to the company, Nike's mission is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. For this, the company is based on a culture of inventions, aiming to offer positive experiences for today's athletes, through the creation of products and services, while seeking to develop improvements for the next generations. If you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel in gratitude for our work. And also enjoy and watch some of these videos that are appearing on your screen. Thank you so much for watching until the end.